home to Abbey Dent. The City and Rowing Club of Kenora are inviting the community to an event tonight to celebrate the newly minted silver medalist home from the Paris 2024 Olympics. Abby competed for Canada as part of the Women's 8 crew and they won the silver medal. Abby joins us now by Zoom. Good afternoon, Abby. Hi. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I see something around your neck right here. Uh, just what, first, before we get into any of this, let me see that medal. It's not too bad. Wow. Pretty it's pretty. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. What do you, it, it looks heavy. It's 2.7 pounds. This thing <laughs> weighs you down a little bit, that's for sure. I like that you know exactly how much it weighs. <laughs> Yeah, that was the first thing we did when we got home. Oh, that is so awesome. Abby, uh, take me through that moment when your team won the silver medal. Oh, my goodness. Honestly, it was kind of a blur at this point, but it was definitely something to remember. I remember the last 600 meters of the race, kind of the first 1400, you're kind of in the race. You're not really paying too much attention to where you are compared to other boats, but those last 600 meters were pretty special. I remember our coxswain telling us that we were in the standing for a medal, so give it everything you got at that point. So I remember crossing the finish line. We didn't really know what spot we were in, so we sat there for a second and looked at the leaderboard to see where we were crossing. I feel like it took like 10 minutes. It was probably like 10 seconds, but it felt like an eternity. And then we saw that we got silver and it was a pretty exciting moment. I, I mean, I had this whole plan to do this big, exciting celebration when we got a medal. And I think I just cried instead. So it was a pretty emotional but amazing moment. I love that because you can always think I know exactly what I'm going to do. And you've got that perfect moment planned and then emotions take over <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's no, just, the 100%. tears keep flowing. So what, what yeah. did that really feel like for you? You talked about having to really just dig deep in that last uh, few hundred meters and give it your all. Yeah, I mean, the whole race was like you think you know what you're going to do, but you just go out there and do 110 percent more like you're never going to. You just always got to go and give it 1% more than what you really think you're going to be able to do. Um, I mean, I remember crossing and I had a moment of like, oh, my God, like, we're done. Like, that's it. That's that's the Olympics. Like, we just finished. We finished our race. I got nothing left. Like, that's that was it. So that kind of, oh, my goodness, moment when you crossed and you kind of had to sit down for a second and you're like, yeah, that was that was pretty neat. But that was it. That's it. Pretty cool. Uh, so talk to us about what it was like being in Paris, competing there, living in the athlete's village, getting to meet people from all over the world. Yeah. So rowing is actually an outside venue. So we were about an hour to an hour and a half outside of Paris. So we stayed in a hotel for our venue for the first week while we were racing. Um, but it was pretty neat though. It was a really nice hotel. Um, they had catering and everything there too. So it was basically like living in the village, but hotel. <laughs> um, but honestly, I thought it was a lot better than the village was really nice. We got to go visit, um, the second week. Um, but I think being in the hotel kind of eliminates a lot of those distractions around you while you're racing. So being able to just get on the bus, go to practice or go to race and then come back, eat, sleep, like you're kind of in this little quarantine bubble that you got going on with your team. So having that definitely eliminated a lot of the distractions of the village. Um, but we got to go see the village the second week. So that was really neat. Um, there's about anything and everything you could imagine to go see and do and the amount of people that you meet and athletes and from different countries and different sports was really out of, it was extraordinary to see and talk to a whole bunch of people and even meeting different Team Canada athletes was pretty neat too and kind of hearing their stories of how they got to the Olympics, how many Olympics they've been to at that point, and all the stories was awesome. I feel like living in the hotel, it's got to be a bit more normal because you would have done that for travel for other competitions uh, and, and events, whereas the Athletes' Village, I feel like it, it could maybe get a bit overwhelming. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Like, So before we had done a training camp in Italy for two weeks before heading over to Paris, um, so I mean, you've kind of lived in a hotel for three weeks at that point. So you're pretty used to it and living under your suitcase and going room to room and that kind of thing. So it definitely helped. It made it feel more just like a normal regatta that we would go to. Like it was nothing super big and crazy. I mean, when you got to the venue, it was definitely big and crazy. That's for sure. But having the factor of just feeling more normal at home or like home in your hotel was a nice touch to it too. 
For those uh, watching us on YouTube right now, we just saw a video of you getting that medal hung over your neck. What was that moment like? Um, that was, honestly, it didn't feel real. I don't think it has felt real yet. I'm sure one day it'll click in that this whole thing happened. Um, but I remember getting the medal and I was like, okay, I need to find my parents in the stands and <laughs> show them that I did it, you know, like, like mom, I did it kind of thing. Um, but Honestly, being there and watching all my teammates get the medal before me was a pretty emotional moment. You know, I was following along with some of these on social media, too, and on TikTok, and we saw some of these athletes that were talking about all the food in the, in the village, too, particularly about some chocolate cupcakes. Was there anything uh, that really got you through the Olympics, whether it was a piece of food, whether it was something you brought from home? Uh, was there something that you took with you? Um, honestly, I brought a picture with me of my family from home. That was kind of the biggest one. Um, also, my dad would send me pictures of my dog every day. So <laughs> not to sound like a dog lover, but that was pretty nice just to kind of feel like you're still normal and you're not doing anything too crazy. Kind of having a little touch of home with you was a big, a nice moment. But it's important. Oh God, You've got to have the dog, right? The support. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> She's been there the whole time, so it's <laughs> awesome. So the city of Kenora and the rowing club are honoring you tonight. Tell us about your connection to the rowing club there. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of where it all started. Uh, I started in the high school here at TA, and they did a little Learn to Row program, so that's kind of how I got into it. I went to practice the first day on Rabbit Lake. I was the only kid that really went that day, so it was me and the coach, and that's kind of how it were, that's where it started. And then we went to Winnipeg for Team Manitoba. And then, yeah, Kenora's kind of been there the whole time for me. It's really nice to have a little local moment here and see everybody and get to recognize them as well and all the hard work that they've put in to help me get to where I am now. We're still claiming you as one of our own here in Manitoba. We're gonna... <laughs> yeah. You may train in Kenora, but we're going to claim you. <laughs> yeah, so... Manitoba was a big part of it. Exactly. So. so what has it been like training and just evolving as an athlete over these years in Kenora and to finally, you know, have that cherry on top with the medal at the Olympics? Yeah, I mean, it's been a long time coming. This is my eighth year rowing, so, and I'm only 22, so I started pretty young. Um, I rode in Kenora for one year and then started moving away from home during the summer. So I haven't really been home in that long. So it's kind of nice to be back for a couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, so it started rowing in Kenora, went to Winnipeg and then started the junior national team programs and the under 23 program and then went to school and then came back and rode on the senior team for the last year and a half. So there's been quite a few teams along the way there, but every piece had its moment. So lots yeah. of people to thank, I'm sure. Oh, a hundred percent. Thousands. Yes. How so how supportive has the community been? You've had like you talked about the community here in Manitoba. You've got the, the community back home in Kenora, of course, your family and friends as well. Yeah, no, honestly, the communities have been such a big part of this too. And the Kenora Rowing Club has been such a big help and always there to support me and give me boats when I needed to row and put coaches out and launches out on the water early in the morning before school so I could practice. And honestly, anything and everything I ever needed, they were always there and happy to help without questions. So I can't thank them enough. So Abby, I hear there's a boat naming ceremony. What can you tell us about that? Um, honestly, I don't know too much about it. That was news <laughs> to me secret. too this morning. So yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know which boat it is, but honestly, it's pretty, it's kind of crazy. Like I've always rowed in Winnipeg. They had boats named after people and Kenora, like, so being able to row in those boats and you're like, oh my gosh, this is kind of cool. Like I'm rowing in this famous person's boat, but now to have my own boat named after me is kind of neat. And I hope other kids can look at that and be inspired as well. So I'm kind of excited. It's you're the cool. famous person now. You're the famous person I with know. the name on the boat. That is yeah. cool. That's a full yeah. circle moment. I know, exactly. So At 22, my that. goodness. So how, yeah. how are you feeling heading into tonight's celebrations? I'm a little bit nervous. I mean, there's a lot of people there, so that's always a big part of it. But really excited to see everybody and get to see and meet everybody and get to celebrate everything. So, Abby, at just 22 years old, what's next? I'm sure much more rowing in your future that we're going to be seeing. Uh, probably, yeah. I go back to school here on Thursday. So I have one more year at the University of Michigan, and then I'll graduate and move home for a year and then possibly move back out to Vancouver Island for 2028. Love it. Well, congratulations. Good luck on your last year of schooling. And we hope to see much more of Abby Dent and, of course, this boat that is going to be named after you that will have many, many, hopefully, future Olympians rowing in it as well.
Yeah, awesome. Thank it, you so much. Enjoy your night, Abby. Thank you. You too. Olympic silver medalist Abby Dent. The event happens tonight from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Kenora Rowing Club.